I think there were some bad actors in the VC community who literally started to spur this run by virtually cry, crying fire in a crowded theater in terms of rushing all of these deposits out. This is really can be a threat to banks, and one of the reasons we um, intervened and declared a systemic risk exception. Do you see this as a step to nationalize the banking system? A absolutely not. I see okay. this as a step toward stemming contagion. Treasury Secretary up on Capitol Hill taking a lot of questions, saying the banking system is secure. A Wall Street Journal op-ed, Silicon Valley Bank and Joe Biden's $19 trillion Monday. The biggest problem of all is the size, inefficiency, indebtedness, and unsustainability of government. Our political class has a silent strategy here, too. Hope it blows up on somebody else's watch. That's what last weekend's sweeping $19 trillion implicit bank guarantee was, a short-term choice aimed at helping Mr. Biden's Monday go better. Strong letter to follow. That's uh, bringing our panel, Washington Post columnist Mark Thiessen, WLMAL, Washington uh, talk radio host, editorial director at The Daily Caller, Vince Colonnais, and Leslie Marshall, Democratic strategist. All right, Mark, uh, Treasury Secretary up there trying to instill confidence, had to face some questions about the decision making here that were pretty interesting about who is going to be holding the bag. And a lot of these banks you know, are going to be paying fees, um, and it's essentially a tax. Yeah, it's a bailout. Um, but look, here's here, Ronald Reagan famously said the most frightening words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. And this banking scandal is evidence of that. Uh, the, the reason this happened is because government intervened in the economy for 15 years, kept interest rates super low, which encouraged banks to buy treasuries. Treasury values, when the interest rates are low, they go up. When interest rates rise, they, go, they, they, they lose value. Then the government, had the, we had the pandemic, government intervened, shut down the economy. Then they pumped in $5 trillion into the economy unprecedented, which unleashed the worst inflation in 40 years when the economy opened up. And so what happened? They, the Fed came in, pumped on the brakes, and the result was interest rates went up. And so the, these banks, like Silicon Valley Bank, were left with all these treasuries oh, they that were hedge. They, yeah, they, only they were didn't hedge. It's their fault. It. But it's this series of government interventions in the economy, artificially low interest rates, flooding the mar shutting down the economy, flooding the zone with money, ra then raising interest rates. All of this is government. That did this. And now what they're doing, government again is coming in and now creating a universal uh, a, a, you know, user fee, a user fee so that yeah, your assets are guaranteed. Um, so, you know, government doesn't learn the lesson. It's, it's government interference that causes these problems. But in the end, taxpayers eventually, Leslie, pay in some way, shape, or form. Banks do the fees, they pass it down, it kind of eventually goes to the consumer. Here's an exchange with Senator Langford and uh, Treasury Secretary Yellen. But what is your plan to keep large depositors from moving their funds out of community banks into the big banks? That's certainly not something that we're encouraging. That is happening right now. That is happening because depositors are concerned about the bank failures that have happened and whether or not other banks could also um, no, it, it, fail. it's happening and because it's, you're fully insured no matter what the amount is. If you're in a big bank, you're not fully insured if you're in a community bank. It has been reported publicly that uh, SVB had a large number of Chinese investors that are there, including some that were companies directly connected to the Chinese Communist Party. Well, my banks in Oklahoma pay a special assessment to be able to make Chinese investors whole from Silicon Valley Bank. Uninsured investors will be made whole in that bank. I shouldn't say whether they'd be all paying for it, but that was the understood uh, answer. It's pretty interesting, and, it, and on a political issue, could be um, a vulnerability for the administration. I really don't think so. Uh, the reason I say that is voters have a very short-term memory and voters care about how does it impact them. So what you first said to me, absolutely right. If they start to feel this and they blame this, they say this is the result of what I'm feeling and they feel negatively um, about the economy in, in you know, their own bank account, you know, how many zeros there are or there aren't, then I can see that being an issue. I don't agree with you on everything, Mark, and I will agree with you <laughs> on the Fed's not titrating up and being too aggressive. However, government Government did not create the greed. And we have a lot of greed among the rich. We have a lot of greed in Silicon Valley. We have a lot of greed with these banks. That's why SVB didn't want regulations. And it almost makes me laugh as a Democrat hear, hear, hearing Republicans 
well, now, now kind of saying, well, we, maybe we should have had regulations this wasn't, in this place. This wasn't a lack of regulation. This was mismanagement on the, on the part of SVB combined with government interference in the economy that created the conditions for this for this uh, for this collapse. It I wasn't a lack of regulation. The regulators, I mean, they've got a lot of answering to do and probably a hearing yet to come. Uh, Vince, this is a total travesty, top to bottom. In at at Silicon Valley Bank, over 90 percent of the accounts were greater than $250,000, which is the FDIC insurance limit. In other words, these are all rich people and rich businesses, and we know that they're well connected to the Biden administration as well. This is the reason they're being rescued. And the money in order to pay for this bailout is going to come from normal banking consumers, as you talk about, through these fees, overdraft fees, ATM fees. That means East Palestine, Ohio residents are going to be paying to bail out Silicon Valley Bank. That's true. And this announcement today by Janet Yellen, that they have an arbitrary standard by which they choose which banks get preferable treatment, that is systemically important banks, means that in order for a bank to get that special tag from the government, they need to suck up to the government. How do they do that? Through pursuing ESG policies, through pursuing DEI policies, through pursuing policies that the government likes, they get tagged with, a, with this, this systemic important bank, which means that if they go belly up, the, the government's going to step in and save them. This is a dangerous consolidation of the nation's wealth and the government is doing it right before our very eyes. All right, so I wanted to talk about the Russian drone, but I do want to grill, uh, dig back into this hearing. And this is uh, an exchange with uh, Senator Cassidy and the Treasury Secretary about Social Security. Take a listen. Why doesn't the president care? He cares very deeply. Then where is his plan? He stands ready to work with Congress. That's a lie, to address. because when a bipartisan group of senators has repeatedly requested to meet with him about social, so that somebody who is a current beneficiary will not see her benefits cut by 24 percent, we have not heard anything on our request. And we've made multiple requests to meet with the president. Now, I, you can't comment on that, I realize that, but that is a fact. And if you've been told to say he stands ready to meet, I will tell you there's absolutely no evidence because we have not gotten our meeting. So obviously it's not in his budget, the Social Security part, and they're saying they've been requesting meetings to somehow deal with the long-term sustainability of Social Security. Yeah, he, he isn't ready to meet with a bipartisan group of senators to talk about, but he is ready to politicize it. So he, this, is, this is why nothing ever gets done in Washington. And quite frankly, we don't have a single party in Washington right now that cares about, uh, about fixing Social Security. Yeah, because Republicans because, are not campaigning on it. No, is that? Well, because the Republican Party has become the party of the working class now. It's been a big political realignment under Donald Trump, and working class people, are they're not fiscal conservatives and not Paul Ryan conservatives, and they, they don't care about cutting a smaller government, and they care about getting their Social Security benefits, and so it's only going to happen, and so the Republicans aren't pushing for it, and the Democrats aren't pushing for it, and so nobody's pushing for it. And so we're going to wait until it comes to a crisis and collapses, and then we're going to have high taxes for everybody. Leslie? I'm old enough to remember Rick Scott pushing for it. You know, sorry, am I the only one? <laughs> at least the brochure. Uh, yeah, 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 at least the brochure. Look, I don't see Republicans having a plan that they're putting forth that includes Social Security. I do believe that the president will address this. He has spoken in the past about, you know, how that that isn't going to be touched, how that is, go is going to be secured. And there's one thing about Joe Biden. It may take him a little time, but he eventually gets around to put on paper the things that he has promised and said, and I believe he will do that going forward. I mean, we're always one election away from some solving the big things. We're just almost there, but we never get there, Vince. This is the right counter argument, though, to when Biden demagogues this issue. There's really only one senator who's even raised it, Rick Scott, as you've noted, Leslie. Uh, oh, but, wow. but beyond that, beyond that, this is the right answer to that, which is, okay, you want to make a big deal out of this? Where's your plan to actually save it? You want to keep Social Security around? You have to have a plan to save it. We will follow all of that. We really dug into that hearing. Thank you.